Hey everybody, so today I am here to give you our January favorites, except this month I'm also going to be adding a category. So I have my favorites, the older girls' favorites, and then Lexi's favorites, but also I'm going to be adding a little thing for home. When it applies, some months it'll be there, some months it won't be just depending, but I'm trying to get better at separating things that are for me and things that are for the house. So I do have stuff to share with you today about the house like household favorites. So I will be adding that in today, but let's just go ahead and get started. I think there's like four or five things for everybody, maybe one shy here and there. So we'll just start with Lexi first and work our way upwards, I guess. So the first thing sitting right here, honestly, it's probably her biggest favorite lately. It's this Toy Story 4 book. It's called Bonnie's First Day of School. I actually got this like a year or two ago for one of the girls from one of their scholastic flyers from preschool and Lexi has found it and it is hers now. And she is normally pretty gentle with paperback books, although it has a couple rips in it now, but she loves flipping through the pages and seeing the Toy Story characters and pointing at all of them and she really just does sit there and go through all the pages like back and forth back and forth she doesn't like anybody to read it to her she'll rip it right out of your hands but she'll just sit there and she'll pick through each one of the pages and it's adorable I feel like for a while she kind of got away from Toy Story 4 and she liked other things better maybe it was like with Christmas Elf and the Grinch like she loved those movies and she could watch them all the time but recently she's found her love for Toy Story 4 again and she absolutely loves this book it's something that she goes to every single day and the next one has been it's been so cute so we got her this little leapfrog foam for her stocking for Christmas and it's so adorable she will sit there and she'll pick it up and go hello -o. that's how she says hello and it's the most adorable thing it's how she learned how to say hello because she would always hand me the phone I would say hello, you want to talk to Lexi Dean and stuff like that. And I'd hand it back to her. And eventually she just started saying, how whoa, whoa. And I'm like, oh, it's the most adorable thing. And I'm pretty sure she's trying to say goodbye now too, whenever she puts down the phone. And it's been adorable because she will walk around even if she's not pressing buttons, she's going, how whoa, whoa, how whoa, whoa. And it, I can't get enough of it. And then the next one is something else that she probably does every single day. And it's this peg puzzle. So I actually have a couple of rope baskets that I got a while back just for storage out here. So I take all of these pieces out and I set them in the basket right next to the puzzle. And she goes over there and she does it almost every single day. And she keeps getting better and better at it. So I put all of these back in there. But she can do like the octagon and the diamond and the rectangle she gets like almost every single time and like she's slowly getting better at a lot of them so she loves this thing as you can see she's also been loving chewing on it as well she's getting two more teeth finally it focused but yes I highly recommend this it's like a chunky big pegboard I know they make smaller ones she has smaller ones but these are just really easy for those little toddler hands to grab a hold of I like the shapes I like the colors there's a lot of stuff you could do with this so she has been all about that lately and then lastly is a toy that um I would say about like it's a 50 50 shot if it gets to, I want to say used correctly but honestly is there a wrong way to use a toy as long as it's not hurting anybody so it's this fat brains, I'm not even sure what it's called, twist it something. I don't know. Obviously I'll link all I can for you guys down below, but we got this for her for Christmas. And you know, when she first got it, it was all about just taking the stick out because you can take the stick right off the platform. So you are able to do that. And she would do that. That way everything fell right off of it. It's really cool and she likes seeing that, but now she is getting better at wanting to put these on hair herself and to do different stuff with them. And she has been playing with this a lot more, like kind of more how it's intended to be used. So for being honest, I've seen this everywhere and it was something that I feel like came out around the time that my older girls were too big for it. So we never got it, but with Lexi, I was so intrigued by it. I see it everywhere. It's always like such a talked about favorite toy of people's and I get it. So you just put it on here on the top and it spins down. 
and then it just has kind of like matching colors so you can slowly gradually make a rainbow but you can get a whole bunch going you can put them in any order you want to it doesn't have to be the correct one so they can put them in any order and just have fun with it and like i said you can pull this out and then it will push them all down through the bottom it's a really cool toy and i definitely get the hype now i did put it in lexi's favorite because she is the one who plays with it the most often but i will say that my four and a half and six year old play with it all the time so there's that and then i think that was everything for lexi Yep, so we're gonna move on to the girls. So mostly shared favorites. If you are new to my channel or my videos, our older two girls are very close in age. They're a year and a half apart. They share a bedroom together. They have a lot of shared interests. There are definitely differences, but for the most part, their favorites are pretty much the same. The first thing I will mention is the over the moon blanket set that I got them. I saw these at Target, so I got them each one and it's a bungee, so a bungee stuffy comes with it. And then there's this over the moon blanket that has bungee, Jade Rabbit, Gobi, and some of like the Lunaria people. So it just is the same thing all the way down. But I saw this and I really wanted to get it for them. They really like these kind of blankets. They don't sleep with traditional comforters most of the time. They have different blankets like this that they pick. Remy has a Rapunzel one. Sophie has an Elsa from Frozen 2. And my girls have been nonstop about Over the Moon, Abominable. Both of those movies are just huge favorites. And when I saw these, I wanted to get them something. They haven't had new blankets in a long time and I just thought with the bungee and the blanket and the fact that it has characters that you don't often see with a lot of the toys, I thought that was pretty cute. I will say I think these were either like, I think these were around $20. I think that's a little expensive. They could stand to be like 15 or 12 because the bungee is cute. It is a plushie, but you know, it's not the best quality and neither is the blanket. It's not like super thick or anything. It's whatever. My girls love them. They sleep with them every single night. If you have a huge over the moon fan, I think that they're going to get a kick out of it. But just to be aware, I thought that they'd probably be a little bit thicker, a little better quality, but it is what it is. The next favorite that is way too big to show you guys is their dollhouse that we got them for Christmas. If you didn't watch our what we got our kids for Christmas, we got them this dollhouse from Kidcraft. I think it's the So Chic. I can't remember. Something something mansion. Is it a mansion? I don't, I don't know. They make so many dollhouses. It's really hard to keep them all straight, but yes, that was our big present from mom and dad to the girls. You know, when Lexi is old enough to play with it, it is hers as well, but they have played with this thing nonstop. It was something that I kind of wanted to get them last year for Christmas, but we didn't. We got them the nugget instead, which was a phenomenal choice. I don't regret that at all. But the girls have played with this dollhouse so much. They love it. They play with their figurines. They play with their Barbies. They play with, they were trying to put stuffies in there the other day, which is what we call like plush stuffed animals. Honestly, there isn't something that they won't try to play with in there. They love their dollhouse. It also came with a bunch of wooden furniture, so it didn't cost anything extra. It just came with that, and they love rearranging it. It's been really great quality. Nothing's broken. It's been great. Like, really love it. I love the space with it. I love the openness of it because there have been a couple arguments and it's just like pick your side and then leave your sister alone and you can just have a ton of space while being separated. It's also on wheels. It's just like I'm able to pull it and sweep and it's just great. They love it. They play with it. I would say every single day, honestly. So that by far and away, one of the best present gift purchases we've ever made. And then the next shared favorite is this violin that dad bought them. So like I said, they've been loving Abominable. If you haven't watched that movie, I highly recommend Abominable and also Over the Moon. Over the Moon is on Netflix. It's a Netflix original, so you'll find it just there. But Abominable is, I believe, a DreamWorks movie so you could probably find that any place rent it buy it whatever we bought it off of voodoo and that way we can link our movies through movies anywhere and get it on apple tv or voodoo or wherever we honestly need to get it from long story even longer 
in that movie, the main character Yi, she plays the violin. The girls love Yi. They loved pretending to make different things out of a violin and finally dad got them this one off of Amazon. And honestly, it does a pretty good job. It's pretty sturdy plastic. Like I feel like my kids can't just accidentally break this and it makes decent sound. None of us know how to play the violin. So obviously none of us quite sound like Yi, but it is nice enough where the girls can try and they can make their own music and it sounds even better when you rub this certain stuff on here i don't know my husband's in charge of this thing so you are able to adjust it for the most part i don't know for like a 30 dollars play violin it is very nice I would recommend it if your kid is obsessed with ye and wanting a violin of any sorts or to just even gauge if this is something that your kids want to do in the future. You know, playing an instrument is something that both Mark and I did when we were younger, but that is a huge commitment. Huge. Financially, time-wise, everything. That is a huge commitment. So things like this might make it easier to make that kind of commitment. So I would highly recommend if you're in the market for a play get a feel for it kind of violin. They've been loving this one and even the baby likes to come over. We'll hold the violin for her and she'll sit there and she'll try her hardest. It's the cutest. And the big girls too because when they start playing the violin they get so into it. They do a really great job. And then lastly for their favorites is a couple clothing things that I got for them. So first up with Sophie I got her this sweatshirt it is from the Jumping Beans. I will say that Kohl's has some of the best collabs with Disney ever, period. They make some of the best non-cringy, not kind of cheesy or corny looking collabs with Disney that are just really cute. If I'm looking for something Disney specific and it's not straight from Disney, I go to Kohl's because yes, but wait for it to be on sale, which it always will because this sweatshirt was like $10.00. It is a Disney collab, obviously, but it is Elsa riding Noak and then like some hollow snowflakes too. So Sophie has been really, really loving the whole dark sea scene with Elsa. And this is like a nice plush sweatshirt, very nice quality too. So I got that for $10 and then I also got Remy this for $10. Remy is all about everything Mario. Mario, Luigi, anything, everything to do with Mario Kart, Mario Party, Mario everything. I hear about it nonstop. So it's just a little jacket that looks like Mario and then the hood actually has his hat. And guys, I'm not kidding. This is adorable. If I can link it for you, I would highly recommend it. Both of these things are really good quality, but I did get this for like $11, which is crazy because it's very well made. It's very nice. And when she has this hood up, it is the cutest thing ever. Ever. I absolutely love these two things on them because Remy just runs around looking like a little Super Mario. And then Sophie will actually put this over top of one of her tutu Elsa dress ups. So she's got this cute little sweater on top and then this tutu sticking out. They are so freaking adorable. I can't take it. But I've got them to wear some normal clothes <laughs> because I got them these two things from Kohl's. And Kohl's definitely can be expensive, but honestly, when you hit those sales, I know that's kind of like a meme and a joke and people kind of make fun of people who shop at Kohl's and the Kohl's cash. That's kind of like a whole joke in and of itself, but honestly, it's the truth. Hey, so it's editing Alia, different day, same shirt, but... In editing this next part, I realized there was little distinction between my word pot and pod. I'm definitely saying two different words. It's just hard to understand, and I think that it would make the conversation really difficult. So I'm just going to kind of explain it right here, right now. So what I'm trying to say is that we do have an instant pot, and we have several accessories that's made by that instant brand, and they now make something that's called the instant pod, which is like a coffee maker. So We'll just roll the rest of the footage and I'll take it from there. So you can use either espresso pods or K-cups and you can make coffee or brew your own espresso, which I thought was really cool. So I got this from Walmart. It was a sale after Christmas. I think it was around $80. I think now it's around $120, but either way, guys, it's awesome. I like the fact that you can do both because I feel like most people drink coffee. That's what I would want to offer people 
when I can have people in my home again. I would like to have that feature, but me personally, I like espresso more. I like lattes and things like that a lot more. I didn't want to have to give up one or the other. It was also inexpensive. We aren't huge coffee drinkers, so I didn't want to put a ton of money into something, which I totally understand. If you're all about coffee, I would be investing in something a little bit more legit, but with us, it's more of like an occasional thing. We're not everyday coffee drinkers or anything like that. I personally like tea a lot more. It was something that I've been looking for and I was so happy that they made it because you can use a lot of different brands in those things as well. Just make sure you buy the correct espresso pods. I made a Instagram all about it. So <laughs> you have to be specific with the ones that you buy. But regardless, I highly recommend it. And then the rest of the household stuff has to do with like mostly bathroom stuff, but honestly, it makes sense because I kind of, what would you call that? Like redecorated the bathroom. I bought new bath mats, bath towels, bought a couple of decorations. It's got a little bit of a new vibe in there and I'm loving it. Honestly, when we got married and I put things on my wedding registry, I didn't know what my style was. I was still figuring that kind of stuff out. So I bought so I put stuff on our registry that like I look at now and I'm like, I don't like that at all. But I just kind of did it because it was expected of me. I don't know, whatever. Getting away from the point. This is kind of what our bathroom looks like now. Yes, there is trash in the trash can. We live here. And this was immediately after wiping everything down with a baby wipe. It doesn't always look like this. There is normally a ton of spit and toothpaste all over the mirror and grubby little handprints everywhere and... Normally a toilet, someone forgot to flush, if we're just being 100% honest. But anyways, and by someone, I do meet my children. <laughs> anyways, so some of this stuff has to do with that, but honestly, I've been loving it, so it makes sense. First thing I wanted to talk about, though, was our laundry soap. Boring, yes, but I got a lot of questions on Instagram, so I thought I would mention it here. So this is what we've been using for like the past almost year now. It's the seventh generation laundry detergent concentrate. There's a whole backstory on why I settled with this, but I had my skepticisms. Let's just narrow it down to that. So what happens is that when you flip this lid, yeah, I was hoping it was gonna squirt everywhere. It just looks like a normal squirt bottle, but there is this little orange valve thing in there. And what it does is it controls how much you squirt out in one time. Now it says for regular loads, just use one squirt. I don't ever trust anything when it tells me what to use. So I typically do too. And this lasts us forever. I know you're skeptical. You're like, that would last me like three days, right? No. We do laundry, so much laundry. I'm not even kidding. This will last you quite a long time. And like I said, I'm overusing the product. It says that I only need to do it once right here on the back. One load, one squeeze. It does say that if you have an especially dirty load, you can do two. Maybe that's why I do too. I just assume everything in ours is filthy. You can also get every single drop out. You just turn this over, obviously, when it starts to get empty and everything's down there at the bottom. Like, I love everything about this. It saved us a lot of money. And for the record, my husband comes home in grease, oil, and a lot of other things that they use at their work that are just so dirty and grimy and get his clothes disgusting. This does a phenomenal job. Never once has he complained that his clothes are still dirty or gross or anything like that. And trust me when I say my husband can come home with some filthy work clothes. And then next is a recommendation I got from my friend Taylor because I did get all white towels. I know what you're thinking, insanity. But hear me out, the girls have their own washcloths and they have their own hooded towels. So every time they have a shower, that's what they're using. So the white towels, the white washcloths that I bought, they're for us. That's the only people who are using them. But I still wanted a stain remover because things happen. So my best friend recommended me this Shout stain remover and oh my gosh, is it amazing. It got foundation out of my bed sheets, blood and tomato sauce out of different white washcloths. And there was something else. Oh, spaghetti sauce that Lexi had got all over this white bib, which it's a bib, that's what it's supposed to do. But I wanted to see how well this worked wow it got all of it out it was amazing and like it's that bib texture that's waterproof which i feel like holds on to stains a lot more so this stuff is amazing i have another bottle coming from target because it's been working so so well 
The next big thing for a household is this dress-up rack that's actually in the girl's bedroom. This is something I got a while ago. Have I even mentioned it? Maybe I have. I can't remember. <laughs> So I got this because their dress ups were in these baskets. They would never play with them. I mean, they would, but they would dig one out and then be this whole pile on the floor. It was just a mess. I wanted something better. So I found this one. I believe it was like 30 bucks on Amazon. So very affordable. I got some of those velvet hangers to really get a hold of those awkward little dresses. And it's been working out amazingly. And honestly, what we do is we put even like that favorite Elsa sweater and the Mario sweatshirt on there, things that they wear a lot just because it's so accessible to them. But it's been great. It's just a little thing that has contained their stuff. It's nothing extravagant or crazy or anything like that. It's just done exactly what I wanted and it was affordable. And then lastly, I wanted to mention these bath mats right here. I got these from Target. These bath mats were a gamble and I'm so glad that I did it because they are what is in my opinion the world's best bath mat ever so i was going for that look that they have like a little bit of a crocheted lace i don't even know if you could use the word lace whatever trim and the plush part where you step is so soft it also absorbs a ton they are just amazing it comes with two but our bathroom is so small <laughs> that when i put both down like i tried to put one in front of the sink and one by the shower it essentially carpeted our bathroom. So I just decided to stick the one smaller one in front of our shower. I put the bigger one up into the loft for storage. When we move and we get a bigger house, the longer one will definitely be great, like in front of a tub. That's definitely what it's meant for. But we just have such a small bathroom, but I would 100% recommend these bath mats. I know, such a specific thing. And then lastly, let's get on to mom. While we're talking about the bath stuff, let's just round it out. I got these bath sheets, yes, sheets from Walmart. I saw these in store and I was intrigued. So I did get white towels, but then I got this can't remember what it's called. I think taupe was in the name. I'll obviously try to link them for you. But um, there are these basically extra, extra big bath towels. So this is kind of the design on them. It is white. It's also taupe, a little of the in-between in the middle. But I love these. I am a plus size mom. I can fit into a regular towel, but not comfortably. Not to where I don't think something's going to come flying out pretty soon. And I would just like for, you know, like my knees to be covered and for me to feel like I can get to my bedroom without flashing anybody. So these have been amazing. These like literally wrap around me are so cozy. They're just very, very nice. They are more expensive. These are like $12 opposed to a, you know, regular bath towel that's like seven or whatever. But these are really plush. They're really big, really nice. And if you have super long hair... A bath towel does not fit this. It does not hold all of my hair. I always have the ends sticking out and it's dripping water. It's annoying. It drives me crazy. Not with these. So I just got a couple. They're just for mom. <laughs> and that's why they're in the mom favorites because I got two, but they're just for me. So I highly recommend those. And then next, oh, something I'm absolutely in love with. So you guys have heard me talk about this mascara. And, you know, honestly, in high school, I was super into makeup. I would only use, like, high-end mascara because I had tried literally so many mascaras from the drugstore. I left no stone unturned trying so many different ones. All the favorites. Any of them, honestly. Didn't matter the wand. I tried them all. Couldn't ever find anything. So I used, like, higher-end mascaras for a really long time, thinking that was the only place I was going to find something good. And then in cosmetology school, my best friend did turn me on to this one, which I've talked about before. But then on TikTok, and I feel like social media in general has been talking about this one from Maybelline. So it's called Sky High. And I got it. I found it at my Walmart. I could not find it anywhere online. And I saw this wand when I got it home. I didn't even really look at it, honestly. I just got it because so many people recommended it and it's from that same line of the mascara that I already like. And I was like, this ain't gonna do anything for me. When I tell you I was dead wrong, like it's been what I've been using on my lashes and I know I don't have, you know, beauty guru eyelashes or anything like that, but it's been so great. 
The one problem I do have with my eyelashes is, is they look great when I put the mascara on, but eventually the curl just comes right out of them. It's like it's too heavy, it pulls it right out, and it just doesn't end up looking as good as when I had first put the mascara on. Not with this. It gets like every little nook and cranny of my eyelashes, and I know that this is going to be controversial, but I don't always take off... I don't, I don't always. I don't ever take off my mascara when I wash my face. I'll wash off all this makeup when I get done and I wash my face for the night, but I'll leave my mascara on. Is it good for your eyes? No. Should you wash it off? Yes. Do I? No. I just like that look of just mascara, but I don't want to apply it every day. I'm lazy. Give me a break. But the thing is, is when I put this on and I don't wash it off, three days later, it still looks amazing. I don't know what's in here, but it's great. You need to try it. I would highly recommend it. And it's only like seven bucks. So second to last thing is my journal. So this is something that I started in the new year. It's my mental health journal and I've been loving it. I have an anxiety tracker in here. I have a mood tracker for every single day. It's something that's been very, how do I want to put it? I don't know. It's been very therapeutic, but also it's been very enlightening. Like it's given me a lot of insight about my mood and anxiety levels and different stuff. Things that I wouldn't have even guessed. Obviously, I'm not going to show you a page, but this is a blank page. So it does have dots. It is technically a bullet journal, I think. The paper in it is really nice. It's, I would say like about medium. Like I can see through the pages, but when I'm writing on them, it doesn't show terribly through to the other side, especially if I use a color. But honestly, I don't really care about that stuff. The focus in this journal is just to be doing things to better my mental health and that's what it's doing. So that's what I'm most worried about. But I liked this color. I liked the cover. I liked that it had a closure, you know, cause this thing just comes off like that. I don't know. And it wasn't super expensive. I think it was around like 12 bucks. There's a lot of pages in it. It also has a bookmark. I didn't want something that was like super cheap and you know, that would rip and tear and whatever else. But this has been huge for me. It really has. My mental health as of lately has not been in a good place, but working on your mental health isn't linear. I've talked a bit over on my Instagram with some of the stuff that I've been feeling and dealing with and whatever, but this is a must for me. I fill it out every single night. If I need to do more or if I want to do more, whatever it might be, I do in here. There's no rules. Like I have a Pinterest board that has a lot of prompts and stuff like that on it, but I do exactly what I feel like. Although I do try to hold myself accountable and do the anxiety tracker and the mood tracker every single day because that helps with other things to do with my mental health. So I do that. Lastly, hopefully I can get through this without my camera dying because apparently I drained an entire battery, but, and hear me out, listen to me. Don't click off this video just because you see this. I got myself a barefoot dreams blanket. I know these are crazy expensive, but big, but I got mine from Nordstrom rack for $50. So I did not spend the full price tag. And I know some people might even think $50 on a blanket is crazy, but I honestly live with a blanket on me 90% of the time. That's just how I function. That's how I like to function. I have a blanket that I got years and years ago and it's still great, but honestly, the girls steal it half the time. <laughs> when they go to bed, they want my blanket to sleep with. They take turns with it. So I haven't really had a blanket out here. I, sometimes I steal one of theirs because I just want one and a lot of times I'm just too hot. I like wearing my sweatshirts. I like wearing yoga pants and sweatpants and being comfortable 99% of the time. That's what I look like around my house. So I like a blanket, but then I get too hot. It's this whole thing. So I'm sure you might have heard about these barefoot blankets. They are expensive, full price. They're like $180. That is crazy, but they're super soft. They're really comfortable. What I didn't know about them is they're also stretchy. So like, I like to curl up with mine and just stretch it behind my head. It's so comfortable. It stretches with you and it's kind of like you can cocoon yourself on the couch. So I'll stick my feet in it and I'll just kind of like tuck myself in and be all stretched out. It's great, but it is, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but like I can see light through the blanket. So it is warm. 
It's soft, it's cozy, it's stretchy, but it's also not super heavy, which is perfect, especially if you're someone who likes a blanket on you and your partner or yourself when you're, you know, wearing a sweatshirt and stuff like that, where it's just easy to get really, really warm. You know, I just love this. I love it. I have been like wearing it around the house, like a freaking little shawl or whatever you want to call it. This is how I wear it around the house. I just, and then I kind of drape it over my arms as if I'm some kind of royalty. And this is how I go around my house, just like this. What a sight to see, honestly. And this is how I play video games with my husband at night. And then when I curl up on the couch with my iPad, I'm able to just lay out with it. I, I can't. But yes, these things are amazing. Obviously, I highly recommend getting them from Nordstrom Rack because they're way cheaper. Like I said, it was $50, which is insane. They even had cardigans that were like $30. Obviously, trying to sell off probably some of the holiday stock or something, but... Highly, highly recommend these blankets. They're worth it. They're kind of worth it. $180 worth it? I don't know. Maybe it's like a gift or something, but I wouldn't spend $180 on myself for anything. It's one of those things that I've heard a lot of people talk about. And if you're someone who loves a blanket and uses it all the time, I definitely think it's worth it. So yeah, that is everything for our favorites. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching.